So we'll start with one leg extended out to the side. Make sure you find yourself sitting on those sitting bones. So pulling back on the fleshy bits, sitting on the bony protrusions, the ischial tuberosities. <clears throat> it might help if you come up to sit on a blanket so that your hips are slightly higher than your knees. And we're gonna start by um, getting familiar with some uh, intrinsic movements of our feet. So with your extended leg, we're going to dorsiflex that ankle. So bringing the top or the dorsal side of your foot closer to your shin. And then we're going to plantar flex. So bringing the bottom or the plantar side of your foot closer to the floor. Trying to keep your legs straight if you can and without rotating the leg in any direction. Let's again dorsiflex, plantar flex. And now you're going to keep that foot in plantar flex and pull your ankle into ankle flexion. So the toes will stay curled under, pull the ankle back as far as you can, then release that. So now you're flexing your toes back or extending your toes rather. Now we're gonna pointy flex. So I want you to push out through the ball of your foot as you straighten your ankle. Imagine picking up a tissue with those toes and keeping your toes curled under, pull the tissue towards you and then throw it away. And one more time, you're gonna flex the foot, bring your ankle into extension, pick up that tissue, pull the tissue towards you and then throw it away. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So let's switch now to the other foot, extended. So the leg doesn't have to be out in any particular way, just so that you can see it. You're gonna, you're gonna dorsiflex, plantar flex, then bring just the toes up. Yeah, so now dorsiflex, keep your toes pulling towards your body as you straighten your ankles, so it's like a floin to flex and a point, pick up that tissue, pull the tissue towards you with your ankle moving in, don't drop the tissue, and then throw it away. And one more time, you're gonna come through, pick up the tissue, pull the tissue towards you, throw it away. Good, give that a little bit of a shake. Let's find our 90-90 positioning of the legs again. So here we're gonna try to bring the front leg into about 90 degrees, the back leg about 90 degrees. When you look down, you ought to see two rectangles. Try to drive your back hip down into the floor. So you're trying to bring your weight onto both sitting bones. You're gonna feel those deep muscles of the hip. And now from that, you're gonna place, so I've got my left leg in front. For ease of my cueing, let's all put the left leg in front. Give me, do me a solid here and put the left leg in front. So left leg in front, let's drive the right hip down towards the floor as much as you can. Now place your left hand down to the floor. You're gonna push up to the edges of the feet and send your right hip forward in space. So you're gonna get a little stretch like this. And then come back down, try to drive that right hip down into the floor. Push into the left hand, lift up over the knees, send that right hip forward in space, getting a nice long line. We'll do that just one more time. Drop down, sink down into the hip, and then you're gonna press onto that left hand, lift that hip forward and send it forward into space. Good, now let's challenge ourselves to try to root down through the heels 
and fan our way over to the other side. So you're gonna try not to move the heels and just let that rotation happen in the legs. If that happens, great. If not, no big deal. Once you get there, reposition if you need to so you have two rectangles when you look down. Sink down into the left hip and then push your left hip up and forward, forward and up through the left hip. That's what's driving us here. Sink down onto the left sitting bone. And then again, up and driving it forward. Ooh, that felt good. One more time, taking a breath or two, trying to sink into the sitting bone, lifting up, open that whole left side and then come back down. Move for a moment however your body is craving. And then I'll get you to come to a position where both legs are spread kind of wide. So sometimes we mobilize the hip um, or the leg in the hip socket by doing stuff like moving the leg around, keeping your torso stable. And here we're gonna experiment with freeing up the hip by moving the torso around, keeping the hip stable. So you're not pulling this into too deep of a stretch. You ought to not be feeling any pinching in the back of your seat. It's just an open position. Neutral spine essential. So find yourself in neutral. If needed, bend your knees a little bit. And even if you don't, if you, if you feel like you're on your sitting bones, bend your knees a little bit and notice how that changes your mobility in your hips, just so that you have that experience. If you want to keep your knees bent or flexed in this case, you can bring a couple of blankets underneath to hold you there. So you're gonna start with your hands behind your back and the hands on the floor behind you can help sometimes to get that that um, tilt in your pelvis to drive your pubic bone closer to the floor. From there, keep your legs nice and strong. So to do that for my body, I'm gonna floint like we just did. So I'm gonna flex and point at the same time, enabling my legs to be supported. If I just um, planter flex, I'm using just one part of the leg. If I just, um, dorsiflex, I'm using the other muscles of my leg, but by doing both at the same time, I can support my leg on all four sides. So I'm going to maintain that shape, long spine, and keep my legs, so knees stay pointed to the sky, bring the torso forward, so your pubic bone and everything is going to come forward. If it helps instead, you could push off the legs to do this, and then come back up, and make some circles now. So as you keep your sitting bones to the floor, we're working on moving the spine over the pelvis and come forward to the side. So your arms can be up if you'd like, or you can use the floor to help you. But if you had like a dowel or something down your back, your, your spine isn't rounding at any time. And notice what sensation you're feeling in your hip joint and where your spine plugs into your um, pelvis and the back of your body as you do this. Good, let's do this for one more time. Maybe one more circle on each side. And then we'll come back to neutral. Just give your legs a little rest. Let's come up to stand now and I'd like for you to find those rolled blankets or bolsters that you have. And get to know a little bit more about the relationship between your feet, your hips, and your knees. I need a blanket. I moved them all up here. Okay, let's go up. So you're going to roll that blanket to be um, pretty firm and put it down on the ground. Let me see. Can you see mine? It's going to tilt down slightly. There you go. So we're creating a little bit of instability 
From there, you're gonna step on the bolster, step on the blanket with your whole foot. And just let your other foot come off the floor. So this is a great example of dynamic balance. So at first, keep your, standing, your, your stable leg close to the floor and just let it lift slightly. This is the nervous system practice at first before anything else. You might feel your ankle in a little bit of a lateral movement. If you fall, that's fine, just come back. If you feel strong and stable, then you're gonna start to be a little more dynamic. Maybe you're moving your leg in space. Maybe you're moving your arms around. Challenge your balance to be about a six out of 10. We're gonna do this for maybe, you might feel a lot of sensation as well in the sole of your foot, especially if you find yourself in shoes a lot. So let's take a little step down and go for a bit of a walk. Just make a lap and notice what you notice in your foot, in your knee, in your hip, maybe even in your back. <coughs> If you're using a soft cushion or a blanket, you might choose to kind of turn it a quarter turn so that you're not on the squish down side. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So the other side is a whole different experience. Just wipe that memory from your brain. This is a whole new side. So support yourself as you need to, leaving your foot close to the floor or letting it hover. Maybe moving your body around in space. Don't forget to breathe. Be curious. You can fall, but you can always get back up again. Maybe about 30 more seconds. Again, you might be feeling, depending on what you have beneath your foot, you might be feeling a lot of sensation in the foot itself. Waking up some sensory receptors that may have been asleep. And then let's go for a little walk. Stroll the neighborhood from a socially safe distance or a not social distance, what is that called? What's it called? Uh, not social, space distance? Social distance. Physical distance, that's what I'm trying to think of. And just note how you're feeling in your knees, your hips, your back. So now we're gonna lie on the belly. So I'm gonna try and find a way that I can demonstrate this. Take either a small pillow like I have, or a shoe, or a block, and you're gonna lie on your belly. Bend one knee. So make sure your knees are relatively close to one another. They're not too far apart. Sort of as if you were standing. If it's too intense, on your low back to be up on your elbows. You can also come down onto the belly, like resting your hands on your, resting your head on your hands. You're gonna bend one knee, take your shoe or your pillow and place it on your foot that's in the air. Becca is laughing. She knows what's coming. It might take a couple tries once it's there. You're gonna turn back around so you're not looking at it. Now we're training proprioception. If you took your knee out wide to put the blanket or to put the pillow or the block on your foot, bring the knee back in so it's narrow again. And then once you have, so it might take a few tries to balance the block, that's where you're gonna to practice today. You're just trying to get the prop on your foot, whatever it is on your foot. If it's there, you're gonna to try to straighten your knee to the floor. So you'll also have to straighten your ankle without dropping the prop. You won't touch all the way to the floor, just as close as you feel you can without it sliding off and then back up. So you're going down and back up. It's irrelevant whether or not you can actually like successfully bring your leg to the floor or not. What we're all training here, regardless of if your knee is bent or straight or moving, is proprioception. I see you, Isabel. I see what's happening there. So try three times. You're either gonna go move through the movement three times or try putting the block on three times. 
Once you've done it three times, you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, which might be the same experience, might be a completely different experience. Don't forget to breathe. Holding your breath helps no one. You must still stay alive throughout the remainder of this class. And because you, some of you, most of you, have never done this before, what we're it's not an issue here of your tissues. Like this thing on your foot is not heavy. It's not too heavy for you to do it. It's not that you're not mobile enough to bend your knee to 90 degrees. What we're practicing here is communication between your brain and the tissue. So what that means is that the next time you go to practice this, it's going to be way easier because your brain already knows where to go to some degree. So again, practice three times on the other side. Once you've done three times, we're going to flip onto the back. So I'm just going to grab a pillow from behind my head. So now on your back, you're going to take that prop. Ooh, the sun is right in my face. You're going to take that prop and put it on your foot. So one foot goes to the sky. Put the prop on your foot. Reach your foot to the sky. Reach your leg to the sky and hold it there. From there, you're going to roll onto the belly without dropping the prop. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Hopefully you can see me. I'll be able to tell in a moment. You're going to take your left arm overhead. So I've got it in my right foot. I'm going to take my left arm overhead, start to roll to my right. My thing is on my foot, okay? I'm going to, I have to bend my knee and rotate as I'm going around. So I'm going to bend my knee. I'm going to hit the table and rotate. I'm going to drop it because I'm going to hit the table as I'm going around until I end up back on my belly. So do it one time. Let me scooch over and try it again. Do it one time without the prop so you know the route. The other way to do it, which I've never done before, but I know it's possible, is if you have your right leg up, you can roll to the right. I don't like it, but you can try it if you want. So if I have my right leg up, scooching, and the prop on the right foot, it's a matter of turning my hips. Once I get to my side, like exactly on the side where I am, I need to push my hips up to the ceiling. Like I have to actually get up off the floor. Think of reaching up and then pivot the foot around, bend the knee and come onto the belly. Ta-da! Try three times. See? I've never been able to roll back though. Here I go. So try three times without dropping that prop. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to try and roll back. A good tip is to keep looking at the prop as long as possible. Your eyes are a great indicator of appropriate reception. They're like your best tool in appropriate reception. Whew. Okay, once you've done it three times, just take a time out for a sec. Regardless of whether or not you flipped onto your belly, how does your hip feel? <laughs> it feels like we moved it. Erin, how's your hip feel? I said tired. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Becca, how's your hip feel? Open. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we're starting on our backs. Left leg, if you were doing the same leg as me, pop on the left foot, up to the sky. This is way easier because you can see your foot. Now I'm gonna drop my right knee to the side like a butterfly, roll as far as I can, and then reach that left leg as high as I can, lift, my right hip off the floor, so I'm actually on my thigh more than my hip, while I rotate around, keep watching the prop, until I end up back on the belly where we were before. 
with the prop on your foot, ideally, maybe not. And then never before have I been able to, but I'm gonna try to roll back. So you are giving it three tries wherever you land. It's a lot of work for rolling, isn't it? <laughs> I can't believe I could do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I used a shoe. Yeah, a shoe, a, a foam block is really hard. I think that's what Isabel has. A cork block is a little easier, but scary. Erin, the lighter the thing, sometimes the harder it is. What is that? Doorbell, I just moved and the doorbell was hanging on the wall, but it wasn't a <laughs> doorbell. It was just, a, I have no doorbell, but it works okay. really well. It does fit your foot. Next time I'll be like, okay, everyone, grab your doorbell covers, grab your shoes, grab your gloves. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to do a couple more of my faves. So I want you to lie on your belly. Hmm. We did this, uh, we did a version of this in class before. Isabel, if you have an open space where your head is, you might flip so that your head is where your feet are and your feet are where your head is. Cause like, we're gonna move our legs this way and you might kick your wall. We'll do the best we can in the space we have people. So if you're in a narrow space, I'm gonna get you to scooch your body over to the side of the room that has less space because we're gonna roll the leg and I want the space to be behind you. So we, I want the space to be on your left. So if you're in a narrow place, scooch over. So when you're on your belly, the space is on your left. Okay, so bring your arm, your left arm out, no higher than your chest, not your shoulder, your chest. Look to the right. So look away from that arm. Puh, get away from the arm. Bend your right elbow, right hand to the floor. Reach your right leg away from you and then swing your right leg over your left as you make big slide with your left arm. So I want you to really slide quite a few inches across the space. And then you're rolling onto your left side and extending that right leg behind you. Now this is, an, this is a version of a passive stretch. So we're going to make it a little more active. We're going to inhale, take your right arm up off the floor if you can as though your hands are gonna to come to touch. And as you exhale, roll all the way back to the belly. And then we're just gonna do it again. Inhale, rolling to the side, swing the leg over, pause and adjust as you exhale. Inhale, reach your right arm up, like you're gonna high five your left hand. Exhale, roll back down and around to the belly. And we're just gonna do it one more time on this side. So inhale, left arm slides away from you. Right arm, right leg swings over left. Exhale, adjust. Inhale, the right arm reaches up if you can, and high fives towards your left hand. And as you exhale, come all the way back to the belly. Now scooch if you need to over to the left so the free space is on the right. Arms out, your right arm out to a T, no higher than your chest. Turn onto your uh, right temple. Left arm will bend, left hand to the mat. Inhale, reach the left leg far away from you. Slide your right arm across away from you as your left leg swings over. Exhale here to adjust. Inhale, maybe reach the left arm and let it high five towards your other hand. Bring the hand back down, roll back to the belly. Again, same side. So left leg will swing over, lengthen, lengthen through the shoulder, left arm up, reach around, come on down to the belly. And just one more time, we're gonna slide over, left leg over, left arm up towards the right hand. Then the left arm down, roll back to the belly. Um, nom, 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 nom. How's that feeling? Yes, okay, one last thing. Come on up to hands and knees. If you have sensitive knees, 
be sensitive when you move through these shapes. Maybe bring an extra folded blanket beneath you. We're gonna start off by curling the toes under, getting them right underneath or what feels like underneath your sitting bones and using your hands for support. You're gonna walk back towards your feet. Let me find a better light here. So you're gonna use your hands on the floor as much as you need. Maybe you're able to come hands to the legs, maybe not. Maybe coming up to full sit, maybe not. From there, hands back down if you need. You're gonna flip your feet. So now the tops of the feet are to the mat, same idea. So you're coming back, hands can stay down if you want or they'll walk up. Totally optional, be kind to your knees here. You're gonna lean back into your hands and if you're able to, you'll lift the knees up off the floor. You can't really see that I did it that, but the knees lifted off the floor and you press a little more weight down into the feet. Come forward. Curl toes under, stretch the soles of the feet, like a planter sole. Use your hands on the floor as much as you need. Come down, flip the feet, and with or without your hands, lifting the knees. So you could do the same thing without your hands if you want. One more time. Flip, stretch those soles of the feet. And again, tops, lean back and lift. Excellent, awesome. Let's come down into any final resting pose that you'd like to take. Coming into a shape that feels like rest for you. Supporting behind your head, your neck, your knees or your thighs. Our goal here is to have the spine in a neutral shape. So you might need something behind your head if your neck is out of neutral. And now regardless of the shape you're in, let's bend the knees all the way up, feet to the mat. And just notice if that has any change in the weight. So feet to the mat, knees bent. Notice if that has any change in the way that you're feeling in your spine. And then walk your feet just a little bit away from your bum and check in how this feels. Better, worse, same. If it feels better, you're on the right track. Worse, step your feet closer to your bum. If it feels the same, let's get curious. Step your feet a little further from your bum. Better, worse, same. If it's worse, step it back. Better or same, keep stepping forward. So you want to find optimal place. Pretend you've never done this shape before in your life and really check into how it feels. Walking your legs as far away from your body as you'd like, as feels best in your body. Maybe it's the same as yesterday, maybe it's different. And then pausing here to connect to all the layers of yourself. Notice your bones and imagine them freeing a little bit from the joints and the muscles around them. Imagine them settling heavy. As you breathe, imagine each breath bringing space in the muscles, bringing ease to the joints. Scanning back through today yesterday and Friday, and then setting aside all of those thinking pieces for now and allowing yourself to experience the conscious being in the body.
Notice yourself, notice yourself breathing here. And imagine as though you were standing above yourself watching your body have this experience. So while connected to the sensation of breath, of support of the floor, of the temperature of the room around you and the sounds and the sights, also imagine you have this other perspective outside of yourself like a mirror above you looking down. And then allow this other consciousness to blend back with yours behind your own eyes and start to fill your body with movements that feel needed, opening the eyes, bringing your sense of hearing, sense of sight, sense of touch back to the space around you. Stretching out or tucking in, whatever your body's craving before coming up towards a seated shape. 